Enlight Air is a simplified wireless lighting control solution that makes installation and startup easy. In this course, you will learn how to program an Enlight Air system for a typical classroom application using the Clarity Pro mobile app. After your Enlight Air devices, which consist of embedded luminaires, power packs, standalone sensors, and wall switches are installed and powered up, download the free Clarity Pro mobile app from the App Store or the Google Play Store to get started. Once the app has been installed, ensure that Bluetooth is enabled on your mobile device. If you don't already have a user account for Clarity Pro, create one by tapping the Sign Up button. Enter your information, and once complete, tap the Send Verification Code button. You'll receive an email with a verification code. Check your email for the code, and go back to the app and enter this code you received. Click on the Create button and sign into the app with your email and password. Once you've successfully signed into Clarity Pro, you'll see the sync screen. While the screen is shown, the application is connecting to the cloud to retrieve your sites, pull any new information from existing sites, and check for any firmware updates for your devices, so you must have an active internet connection to complete this process. Once syncing is complete, you'll see your sites in the site screen. To continue working in an existing site, you would select it here. If you don't have any sites created yet, you'll need to create a new site. To do this, Navigate to the site screen and click on the plus sign at the bottom of the screen and enter the information about the site you're working on, then tap create. Pro tip, the more information you enter, the easier the site will be to search for and find in Clarity Pro in the future. Now inside our site, you'll see that each site can be organized into groups, in other words, rooms or spaces, where you want devices to work together. On the site overview screen, tap groups to get started. On the group screen, tap the plus icon at the bottom of the screen and enter the name of the group and select create. You will then be taken to the group overview screen for the group that you just created. The group overview screen is used as a main landing point in the Clarity Pro app. It is the screen that allows for initial device identification and the assignment of behaviors. Here's a pro tip. For sites that have already been commissioned, on the groups page you'll find groups previously associated with the site. Tap on the group you'd like to edit and you'll be taken to that group overview screen. In the group overview screen, you will be able to add and edit devices within a group. Tap on devices to begin adding devices to your group. The device layout screen will open and a grid will be displayed where you will place devices as you add them to the group. Think of the grid as a reflected ceiling plan for your space. There is no north or south. Just try to establish a relative layout. Usually the front of the room being at the top of the grid works fine. Tap the plus icon on the bottom left and select the type of device to add to the grid. The first device in the group to be added to the grid cannot be a battery powered device, so tap on the icon that looks like a light bulb for outputs. Then you'll enter a mode that allows you to lay out the orientation of the Enlight Air enabled fixtures or any power packs. Once you've selected the type of device to discover, the Identify Devices screen will show you a list of Enlight Air devices sorted by signal strength. To identify an Enlight Air enabled fixture, Tap its Identify button, then look at the fixtures. If you see a fixture flashing in the area that you're working in, click the blue arrow to the right to place the device on the grid. You'll now be taken to the grid, where you can tap any square to place this device. To add the fixture to the grid, tap its relative position on the grid or its location on the ceiling. A security exchange will occur as the device is waiting to be placed on the grid, which is indicated by the spinning blue circles. Once the fixture has been added to the grid, it will no longer appear in the list of available devices. It will be added to the list of assigned devices. Once the fixture is added to your grid, you'll see that the actual light level of the fixture changed to a lower light level. Repeat this process until all fixtures have been identified and added to the grid. You can pan around the grid by dragging your finger across. You may also zoom in and out by using the plus minus buttons or by pinching or spreading with your fingers on the screen. If you made a mistake and need to move a device on the grid, select the arrow button between the plus and minus buttons. Select the device that needs to move by tapping it on the grid. Select a new location for the device by tapping on the new location. Here's a pro tip. In the event a device needs to be removed from the group, whether it has been fully commissioned or not, select the minus button at the bottom of the screen and tap on the device that needs to be removed. For classrooms, several national energy codes require 50% of all receptacles be automatically turned off by an occupancy sensor within 20 minutes of all occupants leaving the space. In Enlight Air, power packs, or RPP20s, are used to control both receptacles and other light fixtures that aren't already Enlight Air enabled. 
Similar to enabled fixtures, they can be found under the outputs on the Identify Devices screen. You'll want to plug in a temporary light source into a controlled receptacle to test. To identify the power pack, tap the Identify button and watch the temporary light plugged into the receptacle. Once you see the fixture flashing, click the blue arrow to the right to place the device on the grid. To add the power pack to the grid, tap its relative position on the grid. Remember, place the device where it is actually installed above the ceiling, not where the device it's controlling resides. To reiterate, once the power pack has been added to the grid, it will no longer appear in the list of available devices. It will be added to the list of assigned devices. Once all Enlight Air embedded fixtures and power packs have been added, you're ready to begin discovering switches to add to the grid. Tap the plus button and choose the switch option on the Identify Devices screen. You may notice that there are zero switches showing up. That's because switches go to sleep after periods of time with no button presses. To wake a switch up, press any button. After the button is pressed, you'll see a wall switch appear on the Identify Devices screen. Press Identify to verify that the LEDs on the front of the switch begin flashing. Drop that device on the grid by tapping on its relative position on the grid. Once all the desired devices within our group have been added to the grid, we now have our whole group created. So let's move on to the next step, creating the behavior zones. Select Done in the top right corner of the page. This will take you to the Behavior Zones page where you'll create the behavior zones of the devices within your group. From the Behavior Zone screen, you can either create your own behavior zone by tapping the phrase Create a Behavior Zone, or you can choose a pre-programmed template. For this example, let's select the behaviors of our zones instead of using a template. On the Behavior Zones page, select Create a Behavior Zone. Based on the devices that have been added to your group, you will have the option to select from different behavior types switch control, occupancy common sensors, occupancy individual sensors, daylight harvesting common sensors, daylight harvesting individual sensors, or preset scene if there's a scene selector in the group. Select the behavior type that you would like to apply. Then tap the devices on the grid that you want to be a part of this behavior zone. They will turn orange. You can also click Select All or Clear Selection at the bottom of the page. After selecting the desired devices, you can either tap Done to create the behavior zone or tap the Settings tab to further define the behaviors. If you have selected the Settings tab, you can further customize your behavior set. Change the settings as required based upon your needs or any regional codes. Tap Done when complete with the behavior zone and you will return to the behavior zone screen with your newly applied behavior zone. Configuration flags are added just above behavior zones to alert users of either a non-ideal behavior zone or to prevent saving altogether. An orange triangle is a cautionary flag but you can still proceed with saving. A red triangle indicates an incorrect setting and you cannot proceed with saving until the issue has been resolved. Once you have resolved any reported configuration flags or chosen to move on with cautions if applicable, select the save button in the upper right corner. This will network your devices together and send the behavior zone information to each device. You have now commissioned these Enlight Air devices. Switch behavior zones can be applied to any group that has at least one fixture and one switch. The settings tab allows you to choose whether the light comes on to full bright or if it turns on to the previous dim level when the on button is pressed. If combined with daylight harvesting, turning the lights on will make the fixtures go to their day lighting level. If the switch has raise and lower buttons, the user may raise the light level above the daylighting level. If combined with occupancy, the switch will override the occupancy sensor for one minute even if the occupancy sensor has timed out. Occupancy behavior zones can be applied to any group with at least one occupancy sensor. Configurable parameters include on by occupancy or auto on, lights will turn on when at least one sensor in the zone sees motion. Lights will dim down after a certain minutes of no activity. On by switch or manual on, lights must be turned on via a switch. Lights will dim down after a certain minutes of no activity. Turn on to a specific dim level when occupied. Dim to percentage, the level the lights will dim to after a certain minutes of no activity. The time delay between the sensors no longer sensing motion and the lights dimming to the dim to percentage. The turn off time the time delay between the dim to light level and the lights actually turning off. The total time between no motion and the lights turning off is the sum of the turn off time and the dim after time. Pro tip, 
Immediately after sending programming values to the fixtures, the fixtures will require a few minutes to synchronize before following the program time delays. The best way to accomplish this is to let the entire zone time out. You can do this by leaving the room and closing the door, or covering up all the aux sensors. Daylight harvesting behavior zones can be applied to any group with at least one sensor. These specific set points must be calibrated after the programming has been sent to the fixtures. This can be done by navigating to the Group Overview screen, selecting Device Settings, and selecting Photo Sensor Calibration. To calibrate daylighting, follow the steps below. Navigate to the group. From the Device Settings, select Photo Sensor Calibration, and manually adjust the set point or choose Auto Calibrate for the photo sensor. At this point, you've successfully commissioned a group of Inlight Air devices. You'll notice that any time you're done saving behavior successfully, you're brought back to the Group Overview page. From here, you can navigate back to the Groups page by selecting either the Groups or Done button and move on to adding and commissioning the next group. Or you can stay in the group and further change settings, update firmware, or troubleshoot the group if you're experiencing unexpected issues. Thank you for your participation. Please visit www.acuitybrands.com slash for more information.